What happens when you build the world's longest sidewalk? Add in the nation's best river walk. Four, three. A historic streetcar. Boat tours. Sports. And some of the best dining in the southeast. Oh, and pirates. The boss, baby! Well, you got a pretty happening city. Tampa has been climbing for a while. And now, whether you are coming here to visit or live, I think this might be one of the nation's most vibrant downtowns. The region is really shaking and baking these days. Brand new urban districts, even old places being renovated. Tampa Water Street, after six years of construction, phase one is now complete, which has added so many great dining options as well as Sparkman Wharf. In this video, we'll dive deeper into the Channelside District, showing several condos, hangouts, dog parks, and a great gym. We'll show how this has become one of the more pedestrian-friendly cities, with two creative ways to move around. We'll hop on the historic trolley, as well as the pirate water taxi, as we show you the very colorful Riverwalk. The Tampa Convention Center, now complete, from a $44 million renovation, and next to it, Tampa's number one hangout, The Sale, and the Convention Center Marina, where we'll update you on the latest boat tours, including the new Bay Rocket. And across from the Convention Center to Harbor Island, home to two of Tampa's best open-air waterfront dining restaurants. We'll go inside the Embassy Suites and the JW Marriott, take you to Hyde Park Village, a stylish open-air shopping, dining, and entertainment district. Show the historic Seminole Heights district, including the general store restaurant and the bustling Armature Works public market. Update you on Midtown, which is about 95% complete. Give you a little tour of North America's number one rated airport and meet Phoebe. We'll give info on several things coming to Tampa. Talk about a skyline that will soon be changing even more. We film travel promos across the USA, but today we are on our home turf. It's time to raise the red flags. Go box. As we show you what's new in Tampa. We love Tampa! <laughs> Just a quick note, our previous video, Tampa Travel Guide, shows many other things to do outside of downtown like Bush Gardens, Zoo Tampa, the Strawberry Festival, and more. So you'll want to see that in addition to this video, which will focus mostly on downtown. While Tampa is considered a Gulf Coast city, it's not really on the coast. It sits inland, so therefore your great sunsets over water are in St. Pete and Clearwater Beach. However, you do get a spectacular sunrise over Bayshore Boulevard and its iconic balustrade wall. At four and a half miles long, it's the longest continuous sidewalk in the U.S. There's a linear park with fitness stations on the downtown end of it. It's ideal for running, walking, biking, rollerblading. Across the way is Tampa General Hospital in Davis Island. The other side of the boulevard is lined with historic and modern homes, featuring a variety of architectural styles, some dating back to the 1920s, when the Bayshore Wall was built. Tampa continues to attract tourists, residents, and businesses. While many other metro areas felt a dip during the pandemic, Tampa experienced an explosion of growth. According to the latest census numbers from Axios, which are from 2022, Florida saw the nation's highest population percentage increase, with Tampa Bay largely feeling that move. Tampa Bay is among Zillow's 10 hottest real estate metro areas in 2024. And you can see why, as we are going to see in this video. Tampa has so much to offer. Money just named Tampa the ninth best place to live in the U.S. for 2023. The top spot went to Atlanta, our last video, 
Tampa's food scene is getting noticed too, with more restaurants receiving Michelin stars. Across the bay from Tampa are some of the top rated beaches in the country, which we'll be doing updated videos of St. Pete and Clearwater Beach in the next couple of months. But with that, living in paradise comes at a price. Costs of housing, utilities, and insurance have greatly increased. Downtown districts like Channelside and Water Street has added to Tampa's skyline with condos for people migrating to the city. However, this part of Tampa's skyline along the Hillsborough River has pretty much looked the same for the last 30 years. That's going to change in the next couple of years. This spot, perhaps the most prime location on the south part of the Hillsborough River, looking over the bay, will be the new Pendry Luxury Hotel and Residences. We'll have a rooftop pool and a Marriott of Riverwalk retail and restaurant outlets. Opening in 2026, a two-bedroom goes for $2.7 million. The HOA fee alone will be $2,300 a month. And a little ways up the Riverwalk, near Rivergate Tower, known as the Beer Can Building, across from Curtis Hickson Park, will be One Tampa, a 42-story tower, also opening in 2026, will be one of Tampa's tallest skyscrapers. At the street level will be indoor and outdoor dining overlooking Curtis Hickson Park. The Floridian Hotel was Tampa's very first skyscraper, built in 1927. It is being renovated back to its original old world charm. And now is Hotel Floor. They have a Roaring Twenties themed restaurant and bar on the first floor called The Dan. Now let me say a few words to those of you flying into Tampa. There's Bayshore Boulevard that we just showed way over there. And downtown right there. Flying over I-275. And now over Highway 60. I recommend getting a window seat because it's a beautiful final approach into Tampa International. And now touching down at North America's number one rated airport for the second year in a row. Tampa International has won several awards for its innovation. It has one main terminal that connect to four airside terminals via a monorail system, concourse A, C, E, and F. Baggage claim is on the first floor. Yep, that's the legendary Bella. Ticketing is on the second floor. The terminal baggage and ticketing separated into color coordinated red or blue, depending on the airline. Here's a list so you can find your airline. A very large roomy terminal, even large enough for Phoebe, a 21-foot flamingo, who will turn two years old this August, so make sure you say hi to Phoebe when you arrive. There's several decent restaurants like the Hard Rock Cafe, a P.F. Chang's, also Wendy's and Chick-fil-A. For those picking up a rental car, you want to take the SkyConnect train, which you can access from the second floor. It runs every two to four minutes and connects the main terminal with the economy garage and the car rental terminal. The entire ride takes about five minutes, so everything is very clean, fast, and efficient. We have three stops on our way back to downtown. Here there be pirates. Avast, mateys! First, we head just a mile east to Raymond James Stadium where the Super Bowl was held in our 2021 video, which by the way, I predicted that a year before in the Tampa 2020 video, that Brady would get his seventh Super Bowl ring. Reload! Well, the number 12 jerseys are being replaced by the number six jersey of Baker Mayfield. You also have to wear a bandana and some shades would be nice too, like Wesley here. My Rocky Top dog trying on the Buccaneer red jersey and seeing Sam for the first time at Bucks Beach the Bucks beat line get fans revved up about 90 minutes to two hours before game time. And on the north side of the stadium is where you find a lot of tailgaters. Hi Bailey! You're a sweet oh girl. My on this day, Bailey could not propel the Bucks to victory as they would lose. However, would win the division a week later. A couple of miles south of the stadium on Dale Mabry Highway is Midtown Tampa, 
another new urban district that is nearing completion. It's anchored by a Whole Foods, which is also great to eat at with outdoor seating on the side. There's residential condos with shops. There's the Sunshine Market on the fourth Saturday of the month and Sunset Market first Thursday of the month. The Joffrey's Coffee and Tea with breakfast and artisan pastries and next to it a William Dean to satisfy your chocolate cravings. There's the Element and the Loft Hotels, a true food kitchen, the Colony Grill for thin crust Irish pizza in a post-prohibition themed tavern, Sunda Restaurant with Asian and vegetarian dishes, Orenzo Italian Restaurant, Bella Brava for fine dining, the Walk-On Sports Bistro. I'm going to KO me crazy, picking up a veggie wrap. We go from the brand new shopping area of Midtown to an older shopping district, but one of the great hangouts of Tampa. A couple of miles west of downtown is Hyde Park Village. This is a great, chill, very pet-friendly, open-air shopping entertainment area. In the center, a nice park under sprawling oaks with a water fountain. There's a fresh market for Sundays of the month from 10 to 3. Just a pleasant area to walk around looking at shops and architecture after an evening meal. And the parking garage is free. There's the Cine Bistro where you can enjoy a nice meal while watching a movie. Lots of choices for cozy outdoor dining like Bar Taco, Timpano, an Italian steakhouse, or Forbici for modern Italian dishes. For specialty burgers, goody goody. For healthy plates, bowls, and salads, a sweet green. For coffee while getting a little work done or studying, a Buddy Brew or a Capital One Cafe. Now back in downtown, let's start with the Channelside District. To give you a perspective of downtown, Channelside is bordered by Meridian Avenue on the west side and the Ebor Channel on the east. It extends from the Selman Crosstown Expressway on the north end to the Garrison Channel on the south end. It includes Sparkman Wharf, Florida Aquarium, and two passenger cruise terminals. Whereas Tampa Water Street is adjacent to Channel Side on its western side and includes Amelie Arena and four high rise hotels as well as condos. Channel Side was really where Tampa's downtown revitalization started, even as far back as 2001 with the building of the Channel Side Bay Plaza. But it was not very successful. That is, until 2018, when it was renovated as Sparkman Wharf, part of Tampa's Water Street redevelopment project, which created outdoor dining. Several counter-serve eateries that are housed in shipping containers that were creatively designed. A waterfront lawn. A stage to feature local performers. And the Lighthouse Beer Garden, with over 30 taps, a 3,000 square foot covered bar with televisions and a cooling air system. Now, over 20 years later, this plaza is finally what the original creators had envisioned. I'd say it's one of Tampa's top three hangout spots. There's Splitsville Tiki and Social, a swanky bowling center with pool tables and other games, with a bar and restaurant serving casual fare. Really, just about every kind of food you can think of is here. Just across from Sparkman Wharf is the dock for Yacht Starship with a variety of sightseeing, brunch, and dinner cruises. Usually ranges from about $55 to $90 for adults. Their food and service is really high end, well worth the cost. And there's now a little dog park in front of Sparkman Wharf that opened a year ago, right at a streetcar stop. The Florida Aquarium sits next to Sparkman Wharf. We showed it in our previous Tampa travel guide. Tampa now has a city pass, very similar to the city pass we showed in our Atlanta video. It includes five top attractions, the aquarium, zoo, bush gardens, tropics boat tours, and more. It's $139 for adults, $124 for children, three to nine. This aquarium will be doing a huge expansion that will include an outdoor sea lion habitat to be completed in 2025. They also have a dolphin cruise you can take. In addition to the general admission, it is $17 for adults, $15 for children, 3 to 11. 
Behind the aquarium is the American Victory Ship and Museum. It's one of only four fully operational World War II ships in the U.S. It is $15 for adults, $10 for children 4 to 12. If you are looking to live in downtown, you'll find Channel Side a little cheaper than Water Street, simply because it's a little further away from the Riverwalk and other downtown attractions. So you'll probably get more for your money here. And you have several options with more coming. There's the towers at Channel Side, which was the first high rise built here in 2007, the largest building in Channel Side. The next tallest Channel Side condo is the Sky House, with rooftop pool decks on both the north and south side. Next to it, the Meridian, with a little bit of an Art Deco look. Across the street here is Victory Coffee, a chic coffee bar with gourmet sandwiches and baked goods. I'm having a spinach and feta wrap with a latte. With a tip, it was about $20, but it was a really good breakfast. Channel Side is very dog friendly, with two more dog parks here. This is the Washington Street Dog Park. Also a couple of grocery stores here. Further up 12th Street is the Fitzgerald with the Art Deco charm, a little bit of Miami in Tampa. On the first floor, Robex Juice and Smoothies. And across the street, the Channel Side Bar and Grill with a little outdoor patio. The Grand Centro at Kennedy is the condos with the most shops and eateries, a massive complex that has a little mall area that includes a crunch fitness, a large gym with a good variety of both cardio and weight training equipment, lots of fitness classes. Memberships start at $10 a month and you can get a three day free trial. In the center courtyard area, there's the Bouquet Company for bowls, wraps, and salads, a Gelato Go, City Dog Cantina, the dog-friendly Poor House and Gingerbread Coffee, also a pizza bar. In the center, an open-air bar. On the back side, a park area that has tennis and shuffleboard courts and the Madison Street Dog Park. Across from Grand Central is a Hampton Inn Hotel and the Slade Condos. On the first floor is a Starbucks and an Imperial Draft Beer Bar. Now we move to the Water Street District. This is what it looked like in 2019, near the beginning of construction. And now today, phase one of the Water Street redevelopment project is now complete. It was designed to create walkable streets and connect homes, offices, shops, restaurants, and hotels. To allow tourists, residents, and office workers to all have a friendly, pedestrian-friendly area to eat, work, and play. And I'd say, mission accomplished. Hey! Happy New Year! Welcome to Tampa! Hey. This has brought so many great restaurants with sidewalk seating under trees to enjoy Tampa's weather and nature while eating a good meal, like Emma, Grant, Tanner, and Bobby here, visiting from upstate New York. How's the food here? It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. It's actually so good. Yeah. Hangover pizza. It features the Tampa Edition, Tampa's first five-star hotel, with a rooftop bar, has 172 pet-friendly rooms, also a pool bar with panoramic views of downtown Tampa. Next to the Tampa Edition is a Yard House Sports Bar. And across the street, a Boulon Brasserie and Bakery, a high-end French restaurant with sidewalk seating. And around the corner for quality and fast farm-to-table food, try the Naked Farmer. And if we look at the waterfront area near Emily Arena, this is what it looked like in 2019. And now the Heron Apartments is now complete, with dual towers of 26 and 21 stories, each with a pool deck at the top, overlooking the Garrison Channel, with one to three bedrooms available. Rent ranges from about 2,000 to 13,000 a month. It is pet friendly. There's a promenade on the first floor that includes a public screenwise store, the Pearl Restaurant, features seasonal seafood, and also Three Corners Pizza, a New York style pizzeria. There's also the Predolina Mediterranean restaurant. We now hop on a streetcar to the western end of Water Street. This streetcar is completely free. It runs from Ybor City to near the convention center. Runs about every 12 minutes during peak times. Officials are working on funding to extend it all the way to Armature Works. 
being that that was the original streetcar barn. We arrive at Greco Plaza, where the convention center and three major hotels are at, as well as the marina where you can ride the Pirate Water Taxi to Armature Works. You can take the Pirate Water Taxi from Sparkman Wharf all the way to Armature Works, but you have to transfer to a different boat at the marina. So the streetcar tends to be quicker getting to the convention center, then you can transfer to the water taxi. Here is the JW Marriott, rated a 4.5 star hotel. It is the closest hotel to Amelie Arena. On the sixth floor are two pools with luxury cabanas and a bar for light bites and cocktails. Also has a nice large bar with cozy seating on the first floor. It is ideally suited for conventions and businesses with Tampa's largest ballroom and multiple meeting rooms with great views. At the base on the outside is turntable, a counter serve eatery, great to see. Across the street from the JW Marriott is the Marriott Water Street. On the front side of the hotel is a new ice cream shop, and on the back side is the Riverwalk. Here you'll find a dining oasis, the Anchor and Brine Restaurant, a seafood restaurant with very cozy seating on a terrace. Right next to Greco Plaza is the Embassy Suites with a lounge on the first floor, a third floor pool deck, and glass elevators to the 20th floor where you get a nice view of the waterfront. They also have a nice skywalk that connects to the Tampa Convention Center. On the side of the Tampa Convention Center, there's now a Harpoon Harry's Crab House. This is a great pirate-themed bar and grill with steaks and seafood, really a prototypical Tampa restaurant. And two-tenths of a mile north of that is Hat Tricks, perfect for all you hockey fans coming to Tampa to see your team get beat by our Tampa Bay Lightning. Welcome to Tampa. With the growth of Tampa, there has been more and more trade shows and events here. So therefore, the Tampa Convention Center just did a $44 million renovation, adding in a new glass facade and 18 new meeting rooms overlooking the water. It was recently named Best Convention Center in the Southeast by North Star Meeting Groups. Tall, California-like palm trees line the front along the river walk. Next to the convention center is the Sale Plaza. This is a circular outdoor bar with TVs that is covered by sales, thus the name. It's open from Sundays to Thursdays, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m., and Fridays and Sundays to 1 p.m. There's live music on weekends. And next to that is Big Ray's Fish Camp, where I'm going to try a Cuban sandwich. Janice here said, it'd be the best Cuban sandwich you've ever tasted. And she was right. A melt on a toasted pita bread, just delicious. Tampa, by the way, is the birthplace of the Cuban sandwich. Ran into Logan and Haley, visiting from Idaho. At the marina, there's a variety of boat tours and rentals. We're going to try Tampa's newest boat tour, the Bay Rocket. Despite the fact that I saw a waterlogged passenger having to be dragged off the boat from a previous tour, I said, I must brave the raging waves for all of you on YouTube. I, I saw them carrying somebody off from the previous yeah, ride. Did you so see that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, So it looks like it's going to be a little wild ride. Actually, that was a dummy. And it wasn't too bad. Compared with the Thriller speedboat in Miami in Clearwater Beach, this is a bigger boat. So the ride wasn't nearly as bumpy and didn't get too wet. It's a 45 to 55 minute total ride, although it's about 15 to 20 minutes of speedboating. It takes a little bit of time to get out into the bay, but during that ride, you see some of the nice mansions of Harbor Island. It is $35 for adults and $30 for children 5 to 12. For a slower boat tour, there's the Tampa Bay Fun Boat with a 90 minute sunset tour that is $25 for adults and $12 for children 3 to 12. 
or go tiki tours that is a floating bar it is 59 dollars for adults and 49 dollars for children 12 and under for a public cruise and private tours available as well for groups of at least six people and there's cruise and tiki's tampa with a 90 minute public cruise 50 dollars per person or a private cruise from 299 dollars and up for up to six people there is also the Cross Bay Ferry that runs from mid-October to June, from Wednesday to Sunday. It departs from the Convention Center and takes you to the Albert Wooded Airport in St. Pete, near the Daly Museum, about a mile south of the pier. It is $12 one way or $24 round trip. It takes about 49 minutes. If you want the freedom to tour Tampa by water at your own pace, there are several options for water fund rentals. The Riverwalk Boating Company has these many green two-person power boats that are available for $79 for one hour or $129 for two hours. If you have a group, you may want to try eBoats Tampa, as a standard 10-person boat is $89 for the first hour or $178 for two hours. They also have a larger 12-person boat that is about $40 more. For jet skis, there's Paramount Water Sports near the American Social on Harbor Island. For kayaks, stand-up paddle boards, and bikes, there's Tampa Riverwalk Rentals. Kayaks about $30 an hour or $45 for two hours. Try this mega stand-up paddle board for multiple people. Just over from the Convention Center Marina is Harbor Island. Here there is the Weston Waterside Hotel with shops and dining. Most notably is the American Social, a vibrant gastropub with American comfort food and craft brews on an elevated patio overlooking the water in Davis Island. Next to it is Jackson's Bistro, a sushi bar with a patio overlooking downtown Tampa and the waterfront. One of the most fun ways to move around downtown is on the Pirate Water Taxi. A hop on, hop off, all day pass is $34 for adults, $24 for children 2 through 12. There's about an $8 discount for Florida residents. It runs Thursday through Sunday, hourly, from 11.30 a.m. to 9.30 or 10.30 p.m., depending on the day. There's two different routes. The Island Loop, which serves the aquarium, Sparkman Wharf, Harbor Island, Davis Island, Bayshore Boulevard, and the Convention Center. And there's the river route that I'm on here, which goes from the convention center to Armature Works with stops along the way, like Curtis Hickson Park, where there's regular festivals and events. From mid-November to New Year's Day, there's a winter village with an ice skating rink. Tampa's Riverwalk is currently 2.6 miles long, but will be expanded by another 5 miles, mostly on the opposite side of the river, and run inland into West Tampa, Tampa Heights, and Hyde Park, expected to be completed by 2027. Last year, this Riverwalk was nominated Second Best Riverwalk in America by USA Today, only behind Detroit's International Riverwalk. The north end of the Riverwalk is at the Armature Works in the Seminole Heights part of Tampa. This structure dates back to 1910 when it was the repair and storage facility for Tampa's electric streetcar and railway. These are the numbered streetcar stalls here. Today it is an upscale food court with counter serve eateries and sit down restaurants. And I would say this is among Tampa's top three gathering places. Outside a large lawn area on the riverfront with games, live music, and just people hanging out and having a good time. There's the Stone's Throw, a laid-back, open-air seafood restaurant with oysters and tacos. And there's Ulele, a Michelin Guide restaurant with Floridian fare and a rustic, chic outdoor patio. And want to mention another unique place in Seminole Heights you might like. It's three miles north of the Armature Works. It's the Seminole Heights General Store, a vintage outpost for coffee, sandwiches, in a country atmosphere. Ran into regulars here, Susan and Susie. We come here because Miss K makes the soup and it's amazing. It's like eating at home. Now that the high-speed Brightline train serves Orlando, there are serious efforts underway to speed up the plans of bringing it to Tampa. 
There's no official word on that, but I expect that to happen within the next four years. If visiting here, you should also check out our previous Tampa travel guide that we did, where we show Bush Gardens, Zoo Tampa, the Aquarium, Grady Goat Yoga, the Strawberry Festival, and more. And I hear you, what about Tampa's biggest event, Gasparilla? Well, I'm not covering it this year because we are contracted to film in the Bahamas, which will be our next video. But I do plan on featuring all the Gasparilla events in our Tampa 2025 video. And we also might come and do a video of Tampa's Riverfest, which happens in May. In conclusion, Tampa is not the perfect city. As with any city that becomes attractive and people flock to, you will see negatives like traffic. And with more people, you tend to get more crime. But also, on the other hand, with more people means more money flowing into the community, more tax revenue to create things like the Riverwalk, more money for businesses, which means more restaurants, great places to hang out and eat. The summers are hot and humid, and we have to prepare for hurricanes for a couple of months. But the trade-off is, we get six months of paradise. Yes, it is getting expensive, which might mean some people might be forced to move a little further away from the city. All in all though, Tampa has a lot going for it. We love Tampa. We love Tampa. <laughs> I'd love to hear your thoughts on Tampa. Let me know in the comments below what you have experienced in the city by the bay. If you are traveling with a dog, I highly recommend these Kurgle dog backpacks. It not only saves your dog excessive walking, but allows you to bring your dog to places you maybe otherwise would not be able to. I put a link in the description below. Although our name is Tampa Aerial Media, and this is our home base for now, we film travel videos across the USA. If you would like stock footage or to hire us to film your city, region, or resort, contact us at info at tampaaerialmedia.com. Coming next, we are going to the Bahamas. And then after that, within the next couple of months, plan on doing updated videos of St. Petersburg and St. Pete Beach and Clearwater Beach. So a lot coming from Florida's West Coast this year. From Tampa, I wish blessings to you, wherever you may be. Or, as they say in Germany, or Helen, Georgia, Prost.